Hello, and welcome back to Subatomic Particles with Miss Walker, your friendly 8th grade AISD science teacher. Today we're taking what we learned before and we're using that information to move us forward in the world of science, specifically with atomic models. Let's do a quick recap. We've learned so much about this thing over here called the atom. Let's look at this model and identify the three subatomic particles that exist within the atom, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. Let's remember their jobs. Proton positive, proton positive, proton positive, and massive. Neutron neutral, neutron neutral, neutron neutral, and massive. Electron negative, electron negative, electron negative, and itty bitty 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 tiny. Okay, today our goal is to figure out where do all the subatomic particles belong inside the atom? What do they do in these locations? And what are some of the issues in science we're going to call this limitations with the models that we use? You may have picked up from some previous images that there are patterns in these subatomic models. Let's take a moment to identify what you notice about the subatomic particles in the different images of atoms you are about to see. Think about, are the subatomic particles really close together or are they spread out? Do they hang out in a particular area of the atom? Do they appear to be still or in motion? Okay, did you notice that all of the really big subatomic particles were super close together, packed on top of each other, really crowded and trapped in the middle? If not, check that out right now. See what's happening? In all of these atoms, we see different numbers of the large subatomic particles, the protons and the neutrons, and they are always in the very middle of the atom, always. Even right here, it looks so small, but this is where all of the massive stuff is going on. We call this center part the nucleus. What, 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 what? Say it with me, nucleus. And what does it contain? Always the protons, always the neutrons. So let's think, is the nucleus really massive or really light? We're going to do an animation station to figure this out together. Okay, here we have the nucleus. All right, it's filling with a proton, neutron, proton, neutron, proton, neutron, and another neutron. So based on this information in this small space, there's a lot of mass. The nucleus is actually where almost all of the mass in the atom exists. We're not going to get that confused with the size of the nucleus. It's a very small part of the whole thing, but the subatomic particles inside of it, the protons and the neutrons, are very massive. In addition, we can now see that it's a very dense part of the atom because the protons and the neutrons, they're packed very closely together within this space. I have a crazy question for you. If the protons and the neutrons are always found in the nucleus, what is the charge of the nucleus? Is it positive, negative, or neutral? What, what, did you say it must be positive because protons are positive and neutrons don't have any charge? Boom, great job. Let's take a moment to look at this a little bit more closely. So right here, we have our nucleus. If we have positive, positive, and positive, just like you see, and then we have no charge over here, that's still gonna give us positive overall. Is there anything that exists outside of what we've just explored going on in the nucleus? Do we remember what that is? That's right, it's the electron. What, 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 electron. This guy exists in the cloud. The electrons are zooming around all over the place with their negative charge. We're going to check it out with another animation. So excited right now. All right, so this is what we've got when we're looking at the electron cloud. Is that the electron cloud contains almost all of the volume of the entire atom. And volume is just a science term we're going to use for space. Let's take a moment to compare these two models. Both of them have the electrons in motion, which is a key point for us. Over here, they're on a fixed path. That's not really accurate when we're describing electrons, but we use it a lot in our models to help us see what's going on. 
Over here, there's just a lot of movement going on all over the place. That's a more accurate way to describe the electrons. Let's take a quick check before we move on. The protons and neutrons, they're calm. They don't move around a lot. They sit in the center in an area close together called the nucleus. And then the electron out here is your friend that's the crazy drama fiend. Super negative and always on the move. We're going to take this information and do some true-false practice together. All right, first one, true-false. Protons and neutrons are always located in the nucleus in the center of the atom. Totally true. Protons and neutrons are very active, always running around inside the nucleus. This is so false. Number three, electrons are negative and constantly moving around in the electron cloud. Da -na -na, na -na -na, na -na -na. True. And the last one, because protons and neutrons stay inside the nucleus, the nucleus always has a positive charge. This is also very true. If you went through these and you did not get the correct part, true or false, Take a moment to go back in the video and clear up any misconceptions you might have because you want to be able to go through this part and answer them correctly with confidence. We're going to take what we just did in this true false and up the rigor game, which means we're just going to give you a more challenging piece to make sure that you can answer this question on all levels. Take a moment. I'm going to read it aloud. You read it through as well. Identify which of the following should be true in the model of the atom to our right. Use what you now know to be true regarding masses, charges, location, and activity of the three subatomic particles. Is it A, the electron should be in the nucleus, B, the proton should have a negative charge, C, the neutron should be much more massive, or D, the electron should be much smaller in size? You got about three seconds. Two, one, boom. Did you get D? That's so amazing. I can't even stand it. And again, if you did not, don't stress. Go back and look at other parts of that video again so you can come here and you can do this with confidence. Have a great rest of your day. Do an amazing job in science. Miss Walker here, checking out. See ya.